building your own sim wheel, the OSW as it's called, is fun, challenging and expensive. What you end up with is a powerful direct drive steering system for driving simulators. They are incredibly immersive. If you are a serious sim racer, it will take you to the next level. The open sim wheel can be used not only for cars but also for trucks such as the Euro Truck Simulator 2. The cost of parts looks like this. So the total is $1506 Australian. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether I actually saved any money by building it myself. I'm not an expert sim racer and I've never competed in an online race, but at the same time I didn't want to buy a half-baked force feedback system either. There are two parts to this project. Part one will be how I built the direct drive wheel and part two will be how I built a wireless Bluetooth shifter. Part 1. Building the open sim wheel based on the SimuCube and Ioni Pro. This is what it will look like in its Cooler Master Elite case. The first step will be to order all of the parts. I purchased a small Midge servo motor directly from Midge via Alibaba. The company name is Hangzhou Midge Electric Company Limited. Some advice for you to consider. Don't make the same mistake as others have and try to save a few dollars by either going through another website or distributor such as AliExpress or finding a cheaper equivalent. Inevitably, OSW builders will go direct to the manufacturer. If you email her that you are building an open sim wheel, OSW, she will make sure that you get the right motor and cables at a good price. I had the option of upgrading the encoder to an absolute type called BIS-C. This is a 22-bit position encoder, meaning that the force feedback will be more accurate and driving experience will be smoother. However, it does cost a bit more money. And this is the shot of the encoder at the back of the servo drive motor. I also ordered two cables, one for the servo power and the other for the BIS-C encoder. This makes the whole build a lot easier. You simply plug them in. I'm not sure whether the cables are fully shielded or not though. Electrical interference from EMF can cause some very strange and hard to find issues that others have experienced, especially if you're using a VR headset. I ordered the SimuCube motherboard and Ioni Pro directly from the Granite Devices website. Certain countries have import taxes, so you should take this into account when you order. You'll need to read the SimuCube installation wiki several times, like I did, to get acquainted with the jargon and how the system works. You need the pro version of Ioni to handle the small midge current. You'll also need to download the SimuCube software called Granity, the firmware and the bootloader. The motor settings DRC file can be downloaded from a, a different website other than Granite Devices and the links for all of this free software is coming up. I'll also put it in the description. The SimuCube force feedback motherboard and the only uh, servo motor drive board are not sold with the latest firmware installed, so you'll need to download and update them yourself. More on this later. The other parts you'll need to order are the steering wheel, the power supply, the emergency stop, Cooler Master Elite 110 case, the midge mount, a three pin cable and socket, and a quick release clamp. The basic sequence for setting up SimuCube with the Ioni drive board is as follows. Update the firmware on the Ioni Pro drive. Secondly, install the bootloader on SimuCube. Third, update the firmware on SimuCube. Fourth, connect the motor, encoder cables and emergency stop button. Five, load the motor settings into SimuCube appropriate for your servo. For the setup process, you don't need to change the two dip switches on the SimuCube board. It already arrives in what is called DFU mode, device 
firmware update mode. In addition, you'll need two USB 2 cables, which are A male to Mini B. It can be confusing at first to know which USB socket on the SimuCube motherboard to use when completing actions, so it'll be much easier to have two cables plugged into two USB 2 ports on your PC at all times during setup. The outermost USB socket, which has Granity labelled on the printed circuit board, is used to update firmware and program the IONI board, whereas the inner USB socket is for the gaming interface and will be the one you will connect to your PC once everything is set up. SimuCube will be detected as a joystick. My advice is to get the right USB cables from the start and don't use USB extension cables as they can introduce some unnecessary problems which can be hard to find. You do not need to connect the motor or encoder cables or the emergency stop button initially. Simply connect the 48 volt power supply, two USB cables and plug the IONI board into the SimuCube slot. Granity is the configuration software tool used for Granite devices motor drives such as the IONI. Download the Granity software suitable for your PC and install it. When you first plug in SimuCube, it will be in bootloader mode, ready for the firmware to be updated. I had a lot of trouble at this stage. I couldn't get a stable connection to SimuCube on my gaming PC. The driver icon for the SimuCube is named STM32 Bootloader, and it flashed between normal and a kind of greyed out or washed out image every second. When I contacted Granite Devices support, they advised me to try different cables in different ports on my PC. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work. And so in desperation, I installed Granity and the Diffuse bootloader on my Win 8 laptop and everything started working then. So just to jump ahead for a moment, I never found out why the device driver was connecting and disconnecting. I suspect it was a driver conflict, but once I had SimuCube configured on my laptop, I simply plugged it back into my gaming PC and it started working. Before we get into the configuration, the first task is to get all the files needed. You'll also need to download the servo motor setup or configuration file from here. Some third-party chipsets don't play very well with SimuCube. Look at your motherboard manual and connect SimuCube to the chipset native USB 2 ports, not third-party ones such as VIA or OzMedia. The two DIP switches should be in the normal position. Windows devices should report an FT230X basic UART and an STM32 bootloader. Start Granity and click on the Connect tab and select the Simple Motion port. Click Connect and you should see the IONI drive. Click Open. Start by updating the IONI board firmware. Click on Install Firmware at the bottom of the window. Find where you downloaded the firmware and when I downloaded it, the latest version was 1.7.12. Find the GDF file and click install. It should come up with a window like this. Finished. The next step is to install the bootloader code into SimuCube using the Diffuse demo. Start Diffuse demo and make sure that the STM device in DFU mode is selected. Do this ne next step very carefully. At the bottom of the window, there are two choose buttons. Pick the one on the right. Find the 11.2 firmware zip file you downloaded earlier. And once you've unzipped it, you'll find two DFU files. Select SimuCube bootloader and reset all settings.dfu. Click the option to verify after download and then click upgrade. Click on Leave DFU mode toward the top centre of the Diffuse interface once it's completed. SimuCube and the only driver firmware are now updated. It's time to connect the motor and emergency stop button and set up the motor parameters. 
Start the Simucube configuration tool and under the Advanced tab, click on Enable Ioni USB Configuration. Leave the window open and now run Granity. Now that the Ioni drive has been enabled for firmware upgrades using the Simucube configuration tool, it's time to open Granity and upload a DRC file from Sim Racing. This DRC file is for the 22-bit BIS-C encoders and the small midge which I have. They also had other types of DRC file on the site. So if you don't have the 22-bit uh, BIS-C encoder, you should be able to find the one that you have in the same place. To check if I really had a 22-bit encoder, I removed the cover and took the following shot. It confirmed that the encoder definitely was a 22-bit one. In Granity, click on the Connect tab and connect to the Ioni drive as before. In the window at the bottom left, click on Load Settings from File. Find the DRC file that you downloaded earlier. You'll get a warning that it will change the motor configuration, and this is what we want. After uploading and applying the DRC, you should be able to move the wheel and see the readings change for position and velocity under the Testing tab. Go back to Simucube Configuration Tool and click on Disable Ioni USB Configuration. In Granity, under the Machine tab, it shows BIS-C 22-bit. The motor parameters look correct for the small midge. I clicked Apply Settings and it reported that the parameters were applied. If you move the wheel now, the graphic on the Simucube configuration tool will move too. Finally, I was able to pl plug it into the gaming PC and everything at this point was working fine. At last I could try a short test with Assetto Corsa and it was great even at the safe default profile setting of 20%. The next step is to put the Simucube board and power supply into the Cooler Master case. I took off the power supply case lid, held with two screws and drilled four holes for Simucube. I had some small M3 nuts and bolts which enabled me to mount the board above the power supply. The next step was a test fit into the case. It was a snug fit and only needed two more M3 bolts to hold it in. The next step was to cut out the power supply socket in the 3mm acrylic using my Dremel. I connected the case fan to the 5 volt terminals on this block and push the two small terminal block tabs down and insert the fan wires which are the two terminals innermost. No screwdriver is required. The fan will turn very quietly if it's a 12 volt one but it does blow enough air into the case to keep the only board and the stacked resistors cool. I had wired the power supply socket earlier like this. Red is active, black is neutral, and green yellow is earth. Note that the active loop for the supply passes through the 5 amp quick blow fuse. If you're not confident to do this, get it done by an electrician. Now I could fit the acrylic back panels to the case. The back panel was stuck on with silicon sealant. I decided not to use more plugs and sockets, but rather bring out the cables through one of the case openings. This eliminated any potential errors and connection issues. I wouldn't be unplugging the cables anytime soon anyway. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that that has given you an insight into how to build an OSW direct drive wheel. Well, that's it for now. Thank you, and thanks for watching.